Hello there and welcome back to another ITH video and welcome to a very sunny but absolutely freezing Essex countryside. Uh, today I'm here to review this, the Skoda Kodiak VRS. Looks like Postman Pat's got a bit of an upgrade, doesn't he? Right, let's talk about how this big red bus looks. And you know what? I think it looks great. I really do. Uh, we've got some special VRS bumpers at the front here. Uh, there's got some lovely gloss black trim. You've got a little bit extra with a splittery bit down here. You've got a gloss black grille at the front and a nice VRS badge. In terms of the standard features you get on this car, there are loads. I mean, this is absolutely jam-packed. There's a lot of options too available but it, it comes really nicely spec'd. I think you've got full LED headlights and, and the secondary bit down here. I mean, it's quite funky, I like that. Ooh, some very nice, I'm gonna bend down here. Got some very nice 20 inch extreme, that's what the name is. Some 20 inch extreme alloys. Uh, now these are great because they are big, they look great as well, but you've still got a good bit of meat on the tire. So you don't need to, because after all, this is an SUV, so you don't need to worry about breaking your wheels and tires every time you go over a pothole. The only real optional thing that's on this car that you can see is this velvet red paint at 380 pounds. When I first saw this, I thought it was flat paint. You have to really get into the sun and get really deep into it, and you can see the metallic flake though. Most of these big SUVs, some of them try and go a bit too curvy, they try and look a bit too much like a normal car. This, it looks chunky, it's kind of got a bit of a bit of squat to it. I like it, big fan. Now, to do the back of this, I'm going to have to walk all the way to the rear, and you'll see, this is a very, very long car. Yep, it really is quite a long car, this. Anyway, right, onto the back of this thing. So, what have we got here? Uh, we've got a slightly more VRS style sporty rear bumper with a diffuser. It's just a central black bit, it's not a diffuser at all. Anyway, spoiler up the top here. Not actually sure how much bigger that is than normal, but anyway, moving on. Love the rear light design in this. You've got some funky bits back here. All LEDs, looks really good. Slight overkill on the badging as well. Kodiak, VRS, Skoda, 4x4. And we have got dual outlet exhaust according to Skoda. Now, I'll let them off on this because even though this one's fake, there are two exhaust tips behind this. So you've snuck into it there, Skoda, and you've just about, ooh, very close. Options that you can see on the back here, we have got a reversing camera down there. That's 385 pounds. Now this does come with an electric boot lid as standard, uh, but this, has got the 195 pound option of the kick activation so you're supposed to come up to it with a big thing of shopping and you wave your foot underneath like a lunatic and apparently it opens you see it open hello kick oh there it is you are actually supposed to kick it maybe it is called kick activation I don't know. Onto the inside of this thing. Now this is really where this Kodiak is gonna come into its own. So because this is a seven seater, you've got these seats in the back. Now with these seats up, the boot area is 230 liters, which, okay, I couldn't fit in here with the boot lid but shut, but there's plenty of room in here for shopping. It's very rare when you have a seven seater that you've actually got any usable space at all in here. This is nice and big. Now these, when you put these down, You've got a very big boot. This is 800 litres in here, which is very, very impressive. I'm going to climb in and again. Oh, you see? Hi. Yeah. Loads of room in here. When you put those seats down, the load area in here is over 2,000 litres. That is just enormous. That is massive. And what's also massive, you're going to love this segue, is the amount of cars that BOTB has in their competition. So once again, we've got to thank them for sponsoring these videos. Uh, they have over 160 cars in their competition. You have to be 16 years or over to play. 
Uh, it is a worldwide competition. Tickets start from just 85p and they give away a dream car to somebody every single week. As you can tell, I'm starting to lose feeling in my face because it's so cold. But anyway, I'm going to start talking on the inside because that is really, really where this VRS comes into its own. Right, now for me, this really is one of the major highlights of this Kodiak, is the interior. The steering wheel is the same as in my old Octavia VRS. Most of this stuff is broadly similar and shared across a lot of the Volkswagen group. But there is a lot of very nice kit in here as standard. So there's this absolutely gorgeous red stitched uh, leather and Alcantara interior trim, which is very nice. You've got a very nice leather with red stitching on the steering wheel as well. You've got some, it's actually fake carbon fiber, but very nice looking fake carbon fiber trim on the dash here. We've got the virtual display in front of me here, which is now, you see that on all the top end versions of these Volkswagen Group cars. Really good, very clear, very nice to look at. And there is a 9.2 inch touchscreen infotainment display system here with Apple CarPlay and all that jazz. There's also uh, keyless entry as standard. Uh, you also have uh, front and rear parking sensors. As I've said before, this has got the uh, rear camera though. Um, and there's an umbrella in the doors. Also the doors have got these fantastic little um, edge protector things. So when you open them, they stop the doors from getting scratches. Uh, Fords were the only ones I thought had those. So it was a pleasant surprise to see that. All goes towards this being a very family-oriented vehicle. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not a sports car. This is a sporty family car, and you know what? It ticks all the boxes in here for me. Now, when it comes to the options in here, uh, the main one has got to be this gorgeous panoramic roof. It just that any with any car having a panoramic roof really makes such a big difference, especially on a big car like this. It really opens up this feeling in here. It makes it feel light and airy. Fantastic. Bit of a punchy price that was £1,185. That is quite a lot. The other option here is this Canton sound system, which is, I'm just looking at the spec sheet here, £405. Yeah, not that impressed with it, to be honest. There are also front and rear heated seats in this one, uh, which are a £205 option. In terms of the space, I mean, it's a big, big old car, this one. There is plenty of room in the front, but as with most Skodas, it's actually when you get in the back, which is where the practicality really comes into its own. So, yep, here I am in the back, and yeah, loads of room. Absolutely loads of room. This seat is in my normal seating position, six foot three in the front, six foot three in the back, no legroom issues whatsoever. And this actually does actually go forwards. If you want more boot room and you've not got long legs, you can actually have more boot space and in fact this is good if there's people in the back you can give them a bit more leg room and both of these slide forward and backwards very practical you've also got a nice little armrest here if you don't want somebody in the middle now of course the big thing with this is that there are seats in the back as well so i'm going to try and get into those there's basically a bit of space in the back here i would say this is for up to maybe a 10 year old uh, i'm actually going to try and you see the seat goes forward, it doesn't slide forward very much, so you've kind of got to clamber in here like this. Oh, okay. Right, there's a lot of leg room. Yeah. Okay, it's not for adults. So what's under this big old bonnet? Uh, we've got a two litre twin turbo diesel. You can see the turbos down the back there, very nice. It produces 237 brake horsepower and 500 newton metres of torque, which makes it fairly speedy. But why a diesel? Well, it all comes down to positioning, I think, within, I mean, don't quote me on this, but this is all down to positioning within the Volkswagen Group. You've got the Seat Ateca. Well, no, you've got the Cupra Ateca that I've already reviewed. That's got the 300 horsepower petrol unit in there. Okay, this is slightly bigger and it's slightly meant to be slightly less of a sporty car than the Ateca. So a big, torquey, powerful diesel actually suits this car a lot better. Now, all the power goes obviously to all four wheels via the seven-speed DSG gearbox. Now, even though it's quite a big old beastie, uh, it does 0 to 60 in seven seconds, uh, about 136 mile an hour top speed. Now, it's supposed to do 34 to 35 mpg combined, 
Um, that is perfectly achievable overall, I think. Uh, around town it was doing about 30 for me. I did a couple of very long runs, 200 miles plus on the motorway, and it was doing 43 to 44, which for a, an enormous brick of a car like this, I think is pretty impressive. I think it's best to get inside this thing and uh, actually drive it. It's 1,850 kilograms, this thing. That's quite big and heavy, um, but it does a very, very good job of keeping control of this body, I must say. It's got standard uh, DCC, which is dynamic chassis control, which, you know, tightens everything up, it tightens the steering up, you can put it into various modes. And in sport, it genuinely does tighten everything up and it feels a lot more taut. I'll say the biggest thing for this car actually is the amount of grip that it's got. It's quite heavy, as I've said, but the four-wheel drive system, it's got big old tires on it. Uh, you push on on a corner, and there's, a, there's, a, there's obviously going to be understeer. This isn't set up to be a rear-wheel drive drift wagon. But you know what? You can control this thing quite well, and you can get down that road with quite a bit of speed, I must say. Now, one of the biggest reasons for that is it's got a lot of suspension travel. Now, this is one reason why SUVs really do appeal to a lot of people. There's a lot of suspension travel up and down, which means it can take the bumps a lot better. It means that the wheels are in contact with the ground a lot more. They're not bouncing all over the place. Combine that with the amount of torque, the amount of grunt, the amount of grip, and the high up seating position in this car. And you know what? Driving down a country road, as I'm doing now, you can actually get along at a fairly decent lick because you can see anything that's coming, you can straight line, you can apex corners if you desire. The stats all say that uh, this is a fairly quick car, and you know what, it is. It is actually quick. It, you, you feel it really in the mid-range, that torque really just shoves you in the back and punts you along the road. And it may be synthesised, which it is, but the sound is actually pretty good as well. push on in this car fairly well. Drops down, two gears, punt it in, accelerate out. Oh, you know what? I just surprised myself there. If they want something that can get you across country and get you across, you know, down motorways and everything with a plum, this does it all. I'm genuinely, genuinely impressed with the way this thing goes about its, uh, its business. Okay, so is the Skoda Kodiak VRS a good buy? Well, now the list price of this is just over 43,500. With options, this one's about 46 and a bit. Um, I initially thought that's, you know, that's quite a lot of money for one of these. Now, when I looked at the Skoda configurator, I specced up the, uh, the next highest version, which is the 190 DSG, Sportline, I think it was, and when I spec that up to roughly the same as the standard VRS, it was forty-one and a half thousand. So there's actually not that much difference. It's only a couple of grand more, and then you get a much more powerful engine. You get all the extra looking sporty VRS bits. Interior is a lot nicer. Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty good value. In terms of rivals, things like the Audi SQ7, which is seventy thousand, and the BMW. Uh, X5 M50D, which is about 75 grand. Now they're far more powerful, far faster, but also a lot more expensive. Um, if you know of any other cars that rival this that are sporty and seven seats, then please just comment away below. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a fairly unique car. Very, very nice thing. If you want a big family oriented SUV that isn't boring in any way, this, this has got it all, I think, and I, I'm, I'm a huge fan. So before I sign off, again, we've got to say a huge thanks to BOTB for making these videos possible. They give away a dream car every single week, tickets available from just 85 pence, and you can also win one of these if you want, so just go over and do that. And after you've done that, or even before you've done that, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, do all of the things that you need to do with notification bells and stuff, because 
We like it when you do that. And uh, keep your eyes open for more fun videos to come on the ITH channel. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.